you haven't seen the souvenir part one, don't worry. You can still watch the souvenir part two like I did. You just might not understand it very well. Let's talk about the movie. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watch Our Pass. I'm here to talk to you about The Souvenir Part 2, which is coming to the DC area on November 12th, 2021. And I think it's probably opening everywhere else, November 5th, 2021, probably LA and New York, November 5th, 2021. So it's coming soon to theaters. It is a new A24 film that is the sequel to The Souvenir. And don't worry, if you haven't watched The Souvenir, you can still watch Souvenir Part 2 like I did. But you might not get as much out of it as you really expect. The director, writer, Joanna Hogg, um, she meant this film as a, a two-part, uh, you know, a, a, an A and a B. Sou the Souvenir came out earlier. The Souvenir Part 2 continues that story almost directly and kind of continues the main character, Julie's journey on her filmmaking career. So if you haven't seen The Souvenir, you can still watch this film, but it, it might be a little confusing. It was a little confusing to me. But hey, let's talk about the movie. I'm going to talk about the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like. And as I'm talking about the film, I will probably reference things in the movie. So there will be spoilers. There's not going to be heavy, heavy spoilers. I'm not going to go into like a pure ending discussion, but there will be spoilers about the film. So if you don't want to know what happens, if you want to know, if you want to come in fresh, uh, you can check out my review on watcherpass.com. It's much more vague. It doesn't have any specific spoilers. Or you can just go watch it uh, when it comes to your local market and then come back and, and watch this review. In the souvenir part two, you have Julie continue her uh, her filmmaking career after a tumultuous relationship with a charismatic and manipulative older man. It, it's really kind of a coming of age film uh, where Julie kind of tries to stay true to her own artistic vision and make this film that she has in her head uh, while also countering some of the influences around her. There, there's some insights that she gets from people that, you know, don't mesh with her vision. And so she has to learn how to kind of trust herself and trust her own strength and get this film made. And the, the, the payoff is the film itself. So as you will see, there are some things I did not really like about this film. So overall, quick review. I think this is a pass. I don't think you have to see it. Maybe if you saw Souvenir, you'll have a better base of understanding for this film and maybe you'll have more attachment to the characters. I didn't get much of an attachment to the characters. I didn't love a lot of aspects about this film. And I know this is my like second A24 movie review in like a month where I didn't like it. And I generally like A24 films. So this is a little shocking to me. I was very excited to see this, but it just didn't, it didn't mesh with me. And I, I had some weird quirks about it and like a very slow pace and dialogue that just didn't keep my interest. So overall, I think this is a pass. That was just a quick take uh, for people that just want to know right at the start. So Things I did like about this film, uh, the quirks. I mean, this is a this is a, a love letter to kind of filmmaking and cinema, and there are some interesting film quirks in here. I, I liked her discussion with some of her more senior teachers about her film and, and their thoughts on it, uh, where she had her own vision and they were trying to influence it. I thought that was interesting. There were some very strong personalities in this film that were fun to see. Some like stereotypical, at least like caricatures of people that you might meet in the film industry. That, that was fun to see as well. And also there were some interesting little aspects here where she had to deal with her budget because she's making an indie film. It's like a student film almost. And so she has very specific budgetary constraints. And so you get you get some instances like that where after they've built the set, she's like, I want to change it to this. And like, oh, like we've already built the set. Like, what do you want to do? So I thought th those things were kind of fun. Uh, the second thing I really loved uh, is seeing the actual film. The, you know, the movie is about her filming a film and, and creating a film and creating this work of art. And then at the end, spoilers, 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 you see the film and it's it's a it's an impressive film. If that was what this movie was, if it was just that film, I would have liked it a lot more. The problem is to get there, you have to go through a, a very long slog, and that just did not keep my interest. I saw it twice and I still didn't really love it. So but the, the ending film is very good. Uh, and the last thing I really liked is the growth of Julie. I mean, that's kind of what the purpose of this film is. You see her grow into her own as a filmmaker and as a person and kind of start to trust her own instincts. Uh and and Again, that payoff is the final film because it, it does seem kind of slapped together throughout. She's not really very confident. But then when you get to see the work that she did, it really is an exciting thing to watch. And it's fun to see this person grow before your eyes and then come through with this great work at the very end. So 
Things I didn't like. The pace. The film is very, very slow, and it didn't seem like it needed to be. It's kind of it has this kind of ambling pace and this lack of drive throughout and i don't uh, i don't know what it was i mean i watched it twice to try to see if maybe i just was having a bad day the first time because i was a little surprised i still didn't like it the second time the the pace just was really slow it didn't feel like some of the scenes needed to be there there was a lot of kind of random stuff that was thrown and maybe it was stuff that was important from the souvenir part one and so maybe these were addressing things that happened in the souvenir part one but for someone that hadn't watched the souvenir part one it, it just didn't really seem like there was a reason for the pace to be so slow. The second thing I didn't love is the dialogue. And again, this, this might be because I didn't see the first film. I'm not sure. But it, it a lot of the conversation felt random. And again, a lot of the conversation felt like it didn't really need to be there for this, the core kind of message of this film and the core growth of Julie. There were some conversations that I was just like, what are we talking about? Like, why are, why is this conversation here? And again, I watched it twice to see if maybe it was just me having a bad day the first time. The second time, I didn't love it anymore. So I, I think maybe this, maybe those were important aspects from the first film, or maybe they were just there to show. I think this, this film has a sense of a lived-in world, a real world. It tries to kind of capture life. And so maybe some of that random stuff is just a true-to-life depiction of what life is. But to me, it just didn't feel like it needed to be there. And you know, you've got a slow pace and dialogue that doesn't really mesh with the overall story. And that just did not help keep my interest in this film. And it's not a very long film. I, I think it's like an hour 40. So it's, it's a normal sized film. It should not have felt as long as it, as it did. And the last thing I didn't love are the indie aspects of this film. And it was weird to see because I expected this movie to have kind of a nicer pre presentation. It's an A24 film, but it had kind of a low quality camera work. It had this weird aspect ratio it felt almost like the, an indie film that it was trying to emulate. Like it almost felt like this film was trying to emulate an, the indie film that it was making. Cause you had some dialogue that was inconsistent. You had camera work that, you know, just the camera didn't look like a very high quality camera. You had a weird aspect ratio. It was, it wasn't four, three, but it, it was not a full widescreen. So again, it felt almost like a student project. It felt like a, like a lower budget indie film than I think it was. And that was also weird because then when you get to the end, that payoff, when you see the indie film, that is actually, a, it's a very well presented work. And so it, I don't know why the earlier parts were like that. Like maybe that's, maybe that's part of the story. Maybe, you know, but for me, I couldn't tell if it was, you know, low budget or if it was very smart. Like, I don't know if maybe this was a, a commentary on like, this movie is about making an indie film. And so at the start, you're showing an indie film as part of the progression and the journey to then create this work of art. I don't know. It just, it just looked off at the start. It kind of soured me at the start and, and it, it, it didn't feel like it needed to be, because like I said, the, the actual end product that you get towards the end is very good. And it, it looks a lot better than the rest of the film, which then made me wonder why I watched the rest of the film. So that's the souvenir part two. Like, look, I, I really tried to like it. This feels like a movie that would be something I would be interested in. It's a coming of age story. It's an indie film. Uh, it's British. I thought that all of those things would be things I would be excited about, but it just, it just didn't come together for me. Uh, maybe it would be different if I watched Souvenir Part 1. Maybe if you've seen Souvenir Part 1, you will like this a lot more. But for me, it just felt like a tough to follow, not very urgently paced movie. That has a great payoff. Don't get me wrong. The payoff at the end is good. So maybe if you watch this, just fast forward to the last about 20 minutes and watch that because it's really good. Uh, but in any event, that is the Souvenir Part 2. It's, it's coming to a uh, limited release November 5th, 2021, and it's coming to the DC market on November 12th, 2021. So uh, I assume that will also coincide with a larger overall release. So you can check it out when it comes to your local market if you want to. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.